Artificial intelligence and machine learning are some of the most important and fascinating concepts in today's world. Many organizations and most disciplines are exploring how these concepts can help us expand the reach of our capabilities. And as we explore how those capabilities help us solve spatial problems, it can be a difficult task to unpack all of the new terms and concepts. So today, we're going to break it down into three main items. At the broadest level, you have artificial intelligence, which describes how you can have a computer or a machine do a task that requires some level of human intelligence. Now, one type of engine that can make this possible is machine learning. And that refers to data-driven algorithms, or really techniques that learn from data to get you the information that you need. And one type of machine learning that has emerged in the past few years is deep learning. And that refers to code structures that loosely resemble how the human brain is adaptive when you solve problems. So there's a variety of use cases for these concepts. Some of these you may have heard about, like self-driving vehicles or recommendation engines. In ArcGIS, we apply machine learning to do spatial analysis. We have a history of applying machine learning algorithms into our geoprocessing tools to solve problems in three broad categories. With classification, you can use uh, support vector machine algorithms to create land cover classification layers. Another example is clustering. We have a new density-based clustering tool that allows you to process large quantities of input point data into meaningful clusters from sparse noise. And with prediction, geographically weighted regression allows you to use geography to calibrate those factors that help you predict. Now, with respect to the recent external, interesting deep learning frameworks like TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn, or entire platforms like IBM Watson and Amazon SageMaker, the strength of our APIs, like the ArcGIS API for Python, allow integration to happen and your capabilities to expand. So today, Kristen and I would love to share a few examples of ArcGIS and machine learning in action. Here's Kristen Hokett. This data reflects over 700,000 traffic accidents in Virginia, DC, and Maryland in 2017. So how do we make sense of all this data? Let's try to identify the most dangerous traffic intersections. One way to do this is by using the new density-based clustering tool. This tool will help us find where our loudest signals are in our noisy data by separating our accidents into meaningful clusters and sparse noise. The two algorithms we'll focus on today are dbscan and hdbscan. Let's tune into some of these clusters. With dbscan, we get the top 100 worst intersections. These clusters correspond with many of the intersections in Baltimore, of which North Avenue seems to be an area of concern. Now let's bring this closer to where we are here at the Conference Center. These are some of the dangerous intersections in Washington, DC. Now, it makes sense that these clusters occur at intersections, right? But I'm not just concerned with intersections. I'm also concerned with other places, with different densities of events. HDB scan can help us with this. Now, here is where machine learning gets very explicit. This algorithm requires little user input and is the most data-driven of the clustering algorithms to the point where it learns to define its own cluster. And we can see this along Massachusetts Avenue, where the cluster now spans several city blocks versus just at the intersection. Finding several clusters in a city is expected. But what does it mean to be a cluster in a suburban town? Let's travel to Hagerstown, Maryland. It's reasonable to find a cluster in downtown. But my eye gets drawn to these teal clusters. With HDB scan, the clusters coincide not only along the interstate, but within the parking lots. If I want to understand the clusters of accidents only within the parking lots, I can use another machine learning method called image classification by means of support vector machine or random trees. Utilizing Chesapeake Conservancy's image classification layer, we could separate those clusters of accidents in all parking lots versus along the interstate to produce a new list of the top 25 worst parking lots. This is just a quick tour of some of the machine learning tools within ArcGIS. Now I'm going to pass it over to Alberto with an example of integration. Alberto. 
So let's take a short trip to a relatively safer intersection in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where at the top left you see a live video feed of this traffic intersection in the middle of town. And at the bottom left, you see the interpretation of this activity happening by a deep learning model that was trained to detect cars, buses, trucks, and people. So let's take a few seconds just to observe what's happening in Jackson Hole today. And it's morning rush hour. I do have to warn you, this is a live video feed, and we're not fully sure what we're going to see in the next few seconds. Thankfully, it's, uh, it's quite a few vehicles, and if we get lucky, we may catch a few people crossing the intersection. Or maybe we can catch another bus cross. That would be interesting. And there's a few people uh, jaywalking, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So it's a small town, and it's a single intersection. But it's a real-time event feed, and that can be a lot of information to process. So in the far right of the screen, we have an operations dashboard that receives a snapshot of the activity every six seconds. And behind the scenes, we have the ArcGIS API for Python orchestrating the entire operation. So it would be interesting to expand this concept across the town or across the city, right? So we've brought this concept home and expanded the scale to all of Washington, DC by partnering with Traffic Land's network of 111 traffic cameras across the district. We're monitoring activity right now. And the size of the point represents the amount of activity in the district where the color of the point represents the predominant type of activity. So let's take a look at some of the busiest intersections in the past few minutes. We're looking at uh, Georgia Avenue and Arkansas Avenue right now. And let's take a look at some of the activity at that intersection. Actually, it just updated. So let me refresh that. Let's go to our cars. Scott Circle actually just updated with 16th Street. Let's let that refresh. There it goes. And we detected 17 separate vehicles at that intersection. It's not too far from here. So let's take a look at the second busiest location. That's Pennsylvania Avenue and M Street near Georgetown. Let's let that refresh. We're going to receive an object detection from this location briefly. There we go. And we detected a bus and uh, 17 cars. There's not a great deal of pedestrian activity across the district right now. But coincidentally, two weekends ago, we found what seemed like an anomaly. Four separate locations along Constitution Avenue reported that the predominant type of activity were people. And I had never seen this before. It made me wonder, is there like a protest? Are there a lot of tourists all of a sudden? And no, coincidentally, it happened to be the St. Patrick's Day parade on that Sunday at that time, and nicely labeled in green. So it was pretty interesting to see real-time event feeds alert us of an event. But where it gets really interesting is when we start comparing real-time information with historic trends at each location. This is a map of truck activity trends across the district, where locations in green signify that there's normal truck activity. And the locations in red signify that there's a spike in the amount of trucks at those locations. So we're still learning about what normal activity for each of these locations means. But with that information and a comparison against real-time event feeds, we can produce information, intelligence, notifications, and a call to action. So this is a brief example of how the integration between deep learning and ArcGIS allows your capabilities to expand. So next, Kristen and I would love to share some of the work done by our colleague Mansoor Rad. So in the previous example, we trained the deep learning model by explicitly labeling the patterns in the data. There's also a class of algorithm that lets the machine discover patterns in the data without human labeling, though. This is called unsupervised learning. And we use this learning mode to solve the following problem. An oil and gas operator that wants to generate optimized inspection routes to their remote oil wells, but they're missing street segments to generate these routes. And a solution is to manually digitize those missing street segments. But as you could imagine, that would be a very time-consuming task. So another solution is to use the GPS breadcrumbs from previous visits to those remote sites. Now, if we look at the breadcrumbs of just a few vehicles, it's difficult to deduce a useful pattern, right? However, if we look at the breadcrumbs from multiple vehicles, from multiple days, then a useful pattern starts to emerge. And now, the first thing may be to connect the breadcrumbs sequentially by time. But if you go through that process, you're actually going to get what is a mess. So let's take a look at what that looks like. 
not very useful. So we solved this problem using an ensemble of unsupervised machine learning algorithms. First, we find the breadcrumbs that are not on the existing roads. Second, using density-based clustering, we group these breadcrumbs to form clusters. And third, and this is our favorite part, for each cluster, we apply a self-organizing algorithm to map a set of lines to points. So let's demonstrate this in action. Do you see how the machine is mutating the lines to fit the points? Let's play that one more time so you can really catch it in action. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It even discovered the turnarounds. And finally, if we snap the new roads to the existing roads to form a complete network, we complete this data set. So in conclusion, using unsupervised learning and self-organizing maps, we took a collection of GPS breadcrumbs and converted it into navigable street segments. What we demonstrated today are just a few of the many machine learning algorithms that you too can use with the ArcGIS platform today. Thank you.